you for joining me again here on our Genuine Diamonds and AR YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe and watch our videos. Uh, we're going to have fun with this. Uh, I've got a lot of great videos planned coming up in the future. Things you don't know about the Crater of Diamonds. And I may even talk about some of the intrusions outside the park. And hearing that, you might think I didn't even know there were any outside the park. But yes, there are. Uh, other diamondiferous lamprite intrusions to the northeast of the Crater of Diamonds. And I'll think about taking you there as well. Uh, today I want to talk about something serious. This uh, COVID-19 pandemic has the whole nation, our entire world, all messed up. And for the first time in its 48-year history, the Crater of Diamonds State Park has been closed to the public. So we don't know exactly when it's going to open back up, what it's going to look like when they do. When they shut down, they kind of shut down in stages. Uh, the camping was the last thing to shut down. Um, <clears throat> but when they were still allowing people in, they limited it to 500 at a time on the field. And they were not renting tools, uh, I guess, to keep from passing the virus. But anyway, when they open up back up, I don't know if they're going to be renting tools or not. But if you're concerned about social distancing, the Crater of Diamonds State Park is a great place to go. If you're going to be surface searching, there's 37 and a half acres to spread out. Plenty of elbow room. No problem. No worries. Now, if you want to dig and wash at the crater, then everybody kind of tends to collect under the two wash pavilions, the north one and the south wash pavilion. Well, then you're kind of elbow to elbow with people and you're a lot closer. If you would like to dig and wash at the crater, and like to consider some other alternative as to being right up close and personal with other people. Not that you have anything against people, but maybe you don't want to get something from somebody or, you know, you just want to be safe. I understand that. So what you could do, take your own wash station in. And you think, take my own wash station in. How would I do that? What is that? Well, that's what this video is about. I'm going to show you what equipment you need. First thing, what I need. This is the way I do it. Uh, I don't use the wash pavilions. For one thing, it's usually too far from where I want to dig and I've got to carry it all that way or push it in a wheelbarrow all way all over there. I would rather set up close to where I'm digging so I don't have to carry that stuff so hard, so far. So uh, you might want to do the same thing. The first thing you'll need is a saw horse. So you got to call the horse over here. Come here, boy. Come here. A little shy, so I'll bring it over. Well, here's the saw horse. And what you can do is set a, a half barrel 55 gallon drum on it uh, as you see this is a 55 gallon drum but it's been modified uh, the side was cut off and so it's a half barrel more or less actually it's more than a half but anyhow it's got a good opening here for you and I love the height personally for a guy my size I don't have to bend over it, it kills my back to work bent over at stuff but anyhow uh, you, you can have your own uh, wash that up here. The uh, oh, another thing I want to say about barrels before I forget this one is real rigid, so it doesn't need any bracing. But if you're going to do a half barrel <laughs> before you come, fill it with water and see if when it gets water in it, it bulges way out like this. That's a problem. So, here's the solution to the problem I've done this with some of my barrels. You can add reinforcement. This is an angle iron. This one's on the inside. Here's an angle iron. This one's on the outside. You can do it either way you want. You can have both on the outside, both on the inside. The only thing you want to consider is, are my screens <laughs> too big to fit in there? Because I've got some custom made uh, screen sets that are pretty big. But uh, next thing you want to do, if you've got your own wash station, if you can't rent screens from the crater of diamonds you need to bring your own screen set so here is a really nice set of stackable screens uh, this is window screen size eighth inch and quarter inch and they stack on top of each other and then as you as you wash down through it you get rid, rid of your big stuff the quarter inch if there was a diamond that size you would spot it right off the bat I guarantee and uh, so you just visually look at it there when you wash that and set it out. 
and then your eighth inch, you want to put that in a separate bucket and Saruka all the like sized material together. And you say, Saruka, what's that? Well, we'll get to that in a little bit. But uh, put all your eighth inch together and all your fine window screen on the bottom. Put that together. What I like about these screens, they'll fit on top of a five gallon bucket. Is that not cool? So if you're out somewhere and you can just pour water through it, but anyway, they fit right on there and, and that's pretty neat. And you think, well, hey, those screens are nice. I like them. Where do I get it? Well, I'm glad you asked. I just happen to know a website, my website, matter of fact, www.diamondsnar.com. Very similar to the YouTube channel name, uh, diamondsnar for Arkansas.com. Uh, when you go there, the products are not on the first page. There's a Crater Stories and Product button. You can click on that. Go to the page, scroll down, you'll see a link where you can order screens like that. And they're cheap, I think. <laughs> Inexpensive. They are not cheap. They are very sturdy. Uh, this, this plastic holds up well, and that's um, stainless steel screen on the bottom. So I've had these for years and years and never worn them out very good set and you can get a set of your own there are actually five screens that come in that set that you might not want to use all five of them but uh three is a, a great number to use so you can check out our website and uh take a look at the product order it you know if you'd like or uh <coughs> let's see oh other things you'll need so when you uh think okay well i've got my own wash station i've got a stand oh before i forget let me tell you you get to wash in here, you slop water over. I'm speaking from experience. Um, the ground gets wet underneath you. And as the ground gets wet, the legs of this sawhorse begin to sink into the ground. And this whole thing begins to tip over and wants to dump all over everywhere. And that is very aggravating. I can tell you from experience. But here's the solution. You can bring either a full sheet of plywood or four little pieces of plywood and just set one under each leg and that way it doesn't sink into the ground so that's real simple to do you can carry that in and out uh, another thing as far as carrying in and out you're probably thinking how do I get all this equipment into the crater and back out well a great way to do it is with a wheelbarrow um, some people prefer a wagon I've got this old thing, you probably think, what is that guy doing with that old antique? Well, it takes an antique to use an antique, but anyhow, I prefer a wheelbarrow to a wagon myself, but wagons work great, and I've got a couple of wagons, I've got a couple of wheelbarrows. So you can pile all your equipment into your wagon or wheelbarrow and roll it into the crater, and yes, wheels are allowed now. They outlawed them for a while, and I had to rig up a box with snow skis and I pulled her pulled it with a rope well I drug it across her grass every day long enough I wore a path and they said okay we're gonna allow wheels now to save our sod so anyway wheels are uh, permissible at the crater of diamonds again now if you haul all this equipment in there you think man if I haul it all in and haul it all out every day that's all I'm gonna do is I'll haul equipment back and forth I won't have any time to dig and wash and find diamonds and that's what I came there to do a good alternative to that is you can rent a pen from the crater of Diamond State Park it, it looks like a little jail cell and they rent them by the day the week or the month and it saves a lot of hauling equipment back and forth and you'll have more time to dig and wash if you're not hauling equipment every day. So it's well worth it to me. And a lot, you don't want to be all worn out just carrying your equipment in and setting it up. Okay, so you've got your stand, you've got support under your stand so it doesn't sink into the mud and tip and fall over. Uh, you've got your set of screens. All you need is water, right? Well, there's two solutions to that. You could set up to wash at the pig pen it's kind of an old horse watering trough thing and they've got a nice new it's a hand pump with a long handle but uh, it'll it'll put water in there it'll fill that trough 
And a lot of times, I mean, I can't guarantee because I don't know when you're going to go. A lot of times you get down there in the pig pen, you got the place to yourself and it's shaded. Uh, one more thing about pumps. If you get there and you work the handle and no water comes out, you might take a cup of water and pour in the top of the pump. It kind of seals that in there and then you can start pumping. It's priming the pump. You've probably heard the expression, but you have to prime it with a little water to get the suction on that rubber so it'll start pulling the water up. But there's a good well there because it's not far from Little Missouri River. So there's a good supply of water. You won't ever pump it dry. Uh, people used to use the pig pen all the time when there was no north and south wash pavilions before they built it. When I was first there in 1978, that's where people washed was at the pig pen. Uh, there's also a like horse watering trough at the north end near the iconic mine shaft building. There's also a hand pump there. Now, if you're out in the sun, you might get one of those pop-up shade things. You pull it apart and uh, you, you can bring those in. You can bring your own portable shade. You can set up a big umbrella, whatever, to be comfortable and be out of the sun. And that helps a lot in the summertime. So, uh, you've got all this and and you need water, you can either pump it from the uh, pig pen. By, by having your own setup like this, you know, you can put the water in buckets and carry it over to it, or over at the east drain and over at the west drain. The east drain is right as you get to the end of the sidewalk, make a sharp left. That ditch there that runs from the boot wash station, that drains the boot wash station, that is east drain. And if you'll go right along there by the uh, tree line, you will see a water hydrant. <laughs> City water. Uh, the crater did a, a great favor by having that. And But there are some rules of use. Now, <clears throat> you need to bring your own garden hose and you need to bring your own Y connector. And you say, Y connector, what is that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Watch this magic trick. I will pull a rabbit out of my hat. Ta-da! This is a Y for a hose. You think that magic was clever? Watch this, watch. Huh? Huh? <laughs> wow, hey, that's not all. I'm, I got lots of tricks. Watch this. There, there. I can do it up high, I can do it down low. Anyway, this is, you hook right on to the hydrant. Let me show you. So you put that on their, their hydrant and then you hook your hose to this. And the beauty of that is they have little valves built into it and you can open water going to your hose and this is still closed but it leaves an opening that some other miner comes along, they can hook their hose to it because you don't want to be a hog and there's one hydrant on the east drain, one hydrant on the west drain, and you get in there first thing in the morning, you hook up, you got water and nobody else does. Well, that isn't right. You don't want to be sharing a hose. This cost, I went yesterday and bought this so I can show you, one dollar. One dollar at the Crater of Diamonds. Save a lot of heartache and grief. So. Uh, buy your own at home or if you forget to bring it on the trip you get halfway here and your wife says honey did you pack the Y hose like that guy on YouTube said to do and she, oh I forgot that I got everything else I got all my screens and all my buckets and tubs and the sawhorse and the shovels but I forgot the Y stop at Dollar General in Murfreesboro one dollar you can get it in fact it'd be a good idea to buy two they're they're kind of heavy handy to have so <clears throat> If you, you've got your garden hose, when you bring it, of course, you can have your own uh, nozzle here to put water in your, to fill it up. Um, it wouldn't hurt to get two of these because instead of a nozzle like that, you can put this on. And like I said, it's got a valve. You can turn it on and off. And uh, I don't know, these are just handy to have. And that way too, if somebody else comes along that doesn't have a Y and you've got several people wanting to use the water and they all have their hoses but no way to hook on having two doesn't hurt and a dollar isn't really a big investment but there are some rules with this uh, you may fill your wash tub with water that's permissible that's what it's there for but you may not 
sluice with it. In other words, I'll pull it up here to go, but pretend these were down in there. You can't hydraulic sluice your ore through the screen. You can't use city water pressure to wash through there. That is not permissible. Uh, you can fill this and then take a scoop or a bucket and wash your stuff through there or just have it underwater and rub it with your hands. Now, uh, oh, the other thing is the park doesn't want this left on all day. Don't just put it in your tub and leave it running and leave it run all day. They have to pay that water bill and it is city water. So, uh, you know, just be respectful. I'd hate for them to take it away from us because it, it is a great deal. They're, they're really doing us a favor letting us have it. So. Uh, let's talk about what all equipment you might need if you are going to set up like this if you are going to dig for diamonds if you're going to surface search you just need good eyes you know but if you're going to dig and wash wheelbarrow or wagon uh, sawhorse and something to put it on and a uh, half tub a set of screens you're going to need buckets every good miner needs buckets I love buckets you wouldn't believe I've got over 100 buckets but anyhow and I'm the kind of guy, I need a bumper sticker that says, I break for buckets, because I'm always driving along the highway. If I see a bucket in there, I'm pulling over. So don't get close behind me, because I'm hitting the brakes if there's a bucket in the ditch, because there's some good ones. In fact, I found all of these yellow ones there. Isn't it cute? I've got matching buckets. I mean, who, who wouldn't love a set of matching yellow buckets? They're lovely. And uh, these are real good quality. Uh, a word about buckets first so they hold up well they're real sturdy every bucket except those orange ones from Home Depot those are trash they break out right here about the time you load them with stuff and go to carry them that's when they're gonna break and dump your stuff all over so anyway I hate Homer buckets from Home Depot my opinion my experience and when one of these breaks it can just about break your toe too and it's aggravating you just filled it you have it carried halfway to where you're going and the bale breaks out. But on most buckets, on most good old buckets that you find along the side of the road and in the ditch, the plastic is very sturdy and durable. You wouldn't believe how many years old this is. Well, maybe you would believe it by looking at it. It doesn't look real bright. But anyway, uh, the wire holds up, the bucket holds up, the handle, this plastic handle is the first thing to break. So what I usually do, I wrap them with duct tape or electrical tape when I first buy them. Well, still, after you use them, they break. Uh, so then what I do is I go to the hardware store, and this is pipe insulation. You'll find it in the plumbing department. And uh, it, it slits open like that. I cut a little piece of it with a knife, wrap it around there, and then I duct tape it or put electrical tape. That makes a nice, soft handle. So that, that's a good quality handle. And... If all your buckets are yellow and have handles like that, uh, you might get them confused with mine. But otherwise, it might uh, help uh, distinguish yours from the others. Uh, something else that would be real handy to use if, <clears throat> say, the rows are like this, and you can't push a wheelbarrow from where you dig to where you wash, a yoke is handy. And let me show you what I mean by that. Maybe you saw this sitting over there and thought, what is that piece of junk? Well, this is beautiful. Don't make fun of my yoke. Well, anyway, put it on your shoulders like that. So instead of carrying buckets the hard way all the time, you can just hook onto this and carry your buckets. So, um, hold the weight and uh, you can go all day that way as, as long as you have a strong back and weak mind which that works perfect for me uh, good combination there so you can make your own this is just a two by six carve it out a little bit and padded put ropes or chains and just little hooks little S hooks so it's not rocket science but uh, something else you will need or is real handy you might want to get a scoop for scooping your material out, um, especially if you have big square screens that I usually use in this. But uh, the brighter the scoop, the better, because then you won't say, where did I put my scoop? Well, you know, it was glowing in the dark. It's hard to miss it. 
and these hook right there and you can get those at like farmers co-ops and things that's what they use to scoop up chicken feed and feed here chicken 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 or uh pig suey you know feeding slopping the hogs so that's where you get them is at a uh, farmer's co-op uh, some other implements of destruction you will need i know this sounds like a lot of material and you might say okay at this point i think i'll just surface search but if you're going to be there for a week i really think digging and washing is the way to go personally i can surface search for a few hours and then i'm bored with that i'm done with that i've got to dig and work i feel like you earn your diamonds you know you got to dig them out of the ground i've found 176 diamonds so far at the crater of diamonds Two of them have been over two carats. I found all 176 by digging and washing. I have spent many hours service searching, and people do find a lot of nice big diamonds that way. I never have, but that may change. I'll give you an update. Uh, I want to show you some of the tools you can bring to use uh, a round nose, long handled shovel. So, a round point, it's called. You can bring a long handled flat shovel which is really nice for scooping up gravel and things like that the round point's good for digging and then sometimes a short handle flat shovel is nice for scooping depends what is best with your back and you can take all these in uh, this is a duckbill sharpshooter and it's good for jabbing in getting that gravel layer out of there sometimes and wasn't that good uh, if that gravel layer doesn't want to come out of there, use a rock bar. This is fun. Just jabbing it in, jabbing it in. And you can pry and pop, and you can get pretty mean with it. And you can even bend one. Look at that. Look, see it. It was straight a second ago. Look at that. Wow. Incredible stuff. Here is a round point short handle. And here is an even shorter handle shovel that comes in real handy. You get down in a hole and you want to get back in there and scoop and if the other the longer handle if you don't have enough room in the hole sometimes these little things are not a toy those are are really good and then if you uh if you have a really tight hole you pull out this shovel and dig or you can great you know instead of a rock bar you can pull the rocks out with this one <laughs> um i want to give a shout out to jack Perrin for the idea of saying Hey, you can tell people they can have their own wash station set up for social distancing. So, shout out to Jack Parrot and thank you, Jack. He's all the way up in North Dakota and probably heard me. So, uh, I appreciate you coming, watching. One other thing I want to mention: when you're scrubbing rocks all day, you kind of wear out your fingertips. It makes it kind of sore. So, it's kind of handy to have rubber gloves to put on. See? And long is great uh, that way they don't fill with water all the time um, summertime you don't have to have them winter time you can't wash in cold water very long before you say i'm done my fingers are frozen this is terrible and i'm miserable and i'm going home you've got to have them in the winter when that water is cold but i like them year round so you don't wear out your fingertips another thing that's real handy to have to wear Dress appropriate for mining for diamonds. An apron. And I'm not kidding, men can wear aprons too. And this is a rubber apron. I got this at the hardware store in town, Murfreesboro Ace Hardware. But we also have them available through our website. If you're planning ahead, if you think, ooh, I'd hate to get the Murfreesboro, count on an apron with them and then they'd be out of stock. You can go to our website, www.diamondsinar.com, and go to the Crater Stories and Products page and scroll down, and they've got real cheap rubber aprons. Don't, don't think, oh, my wife's got a cloth apron at home. It's going to get wet, and you're going to get wet. So especially in cold weather, you really want to keep dry. But maybe even in the summer, you just don't want to be soaked down to your shorts. So um, I know another thing I promised to tell you. I told you I'd tell you what a Saruka is for. Well, a Saruka, it's South American, tool for concentrating heavies. And after you sort according to your 
size, eighth inch, and window screen, which is sixteenth inch gravel. You put like size stuff together in here, and you jig this up and down in the water and work it back and forth. And then you take and you flip that over and let it dry. And the gravels will be concentrated in a bullseye right there. So in the old days, before the Saruka was introduced at the Crater of Diamonds, you had to look through every rock you washed trying to find your diamonds. And so your volume was much lower. You found fewer diamonds because it took so long to go through the gravel that you had washed. But this sped things up and once the Saruka was introduced at the Crater of Diamonds, more diamonds were found because it helped concentrate the diamonds. This one is concave, it's dished. I bought this at the Crater of Diamonds State Park gift shop decades ago. I mean, 30 years, more, 35, a long time ago. <laughs> so long I don't remember. But I haven't worn it out and it's a good one. Some don't like the curved ones. They swear by the flat ones. And this one, it's stainless steel. It's an old bicycle rim. Not all that pretty. Works great. You'll never wear it out. So whether it's flat or concave, uh, they work great. And if you want to see how to use one and get detailed explanation, um, get our DVD, How to Find Genuine Diamonds in Arkansas. A copy can be mailed to you or you can download the eDVD and watch it and I demonstrate how to use this. And uh, also on that DVD, a friend of mine, Dennis Tyrell, that uh, he found 442 diamonds in 29 months and uh, I think 13 of them were over a carat. His largest was a 4.42 carat. He demonstrates his setup on that DVD as well, and he demonstrates how to use the Saruka. So uh, learn from experts. Uh, you might as well do it right. This is all to shorten your learning curve so that when you get there, your time at the crater will be more productive. That's why I did that DVD. I'm doing this DVD kind of as an update how to social distance at the crater in the new times that we're in. So you might want to consider setting up your own wash station, you know, the parts that you need for it. You might uh, go back through and watch it again and, and get a piece of paper and write down, I need a, a sawhorse. Oh, and the sawhorse is modified. Let me point that out. Um, this was actually Bob Wheeling's sawhorse. Uh, he left it here years ago. Again, I, I don't know how many years, a long time. He used it and was going back home to Ripon, Wisconsin, and he left it here. And Bob, I still have your your stand, and I use it. And he, this is a aluminum angle he bolted on here, and it works great for holding the barrel. And they they are adjustable. And uh, I'm still using this. I know it's not maybe real pretty, but uh, whatever works, and this does. So you might modify a sawhorse by putting this on there barrel from rolling off it. and uh, I love the height so try everything out at home when you get all the equipment together you know do a little practice in the backyard uh, before you go on your vacation then you don't have to uh, you know redesign the wheel once you get there you have it all figured out yeah I've got all the pieces I need I got everything I need yeah I didn't forget the scoop I got a lot of buckets I got the shovel you don't need all those shovels and I don't bring a pick either I use a rock bar instead of a pick Anyway, um, you don't need all that stuff, but figure out what you do need. You need a little more than this. <laughs> but um, anyway, plan your trip to the Crater of Diamond State Park. Go ahead and start getting your equipment together. It won't be long and the park will be open again. And if you wanna go and set up social distancing uh, gravel washing station, now you know how to do it. So thanks for joining me again and uh, check back, we'll have other videos coming up.